Good morning, today. Today, today, today. Today we're going to continue with our investigation of kinematics. And specifically, we're going to be using the kinematic equations to do an experiment a little later on. So let's commence operations. For those of you following along in your notes, please turn to this page now. When an object is moving at constant velocity, the formula used to determine time or displacement is displacement over time, or in the case of speed, distance over time. That's something we already reviewed in the previous videos. However, when an object moves with constant acceleration, we have five formulas. Here are the five formulas that we could potentially use. Please note, you can only use any of these formulas when we have constant acceleration. Delta D, of course, represents displacement. V1 represents initial velocity. V2 represents final velocity. And A represents acceleration. And T represents time. To use any one of these five equations, any one of these five equations, we always need three variables. So it's important that before you begin to try to use any of these equations, you have to determine what your three variables are. Now, if you're taking another course, for example, an IB physics course, these would be the symbols used for those five equations. S here represents displacement, V represents the final velocity, and U represents the initial velocity. And of course, A still represents acceleration, and T still represents time. So the equations are the same, the symbols are slightly different. All right, let's look at a common example. A student is going to be late, oh no, for her class. So instead of walking, she puts on her inline skates and blades to school. The student is initially stationary and in 5,500 milliseconds has moved 15 meters and the E here stands for east. What is the final velocity of the blader? So this is a classic problem in kinematics where we have to apply one of those equations. The other assumption that I didn't mention yet is that it's important to consider that all the motion has to be in one direction. So for example, this person truly would have to have moved 15 meters east effectively and not moved north or south while moving east. So in other words, they're traveling in a line. So we're told the time and 5,500 milliseconds, that's not a good unit to use. We need seconds. So recall that 1,000 milliseconds is one second. So that's 5.5 seconds. We're told the initial speed. It's zero. The student is initially stationary. That means the initial speed is zero. And remember, there needs to be one more variable. Well, the final variable is displacement, 15 meters. We don't have to write 15 meters east because a positive 15 implies east. Our goal is to get the final speed, which is V2. So, here are our equations, and there's five of them in total, but only one of them is going to work. The equation that we're looking for has to have time in it, has to have initial speed, has to have final speed, and of course, displacement. So, which equation has those four variables in it? Hmm, well, it's not this one. This one's got an A, and there's no A here. It's not that one either. That one has acceleration, and again, there's no acceleration here. Can't be this one. Again, that has acceleration, and we don't have acceleration here. And it can't be that one, because again, this equation has acceleration, and we don't have acceleration here. And so, it's this one here. Delta D equals half V1 plus V2 times delta T. Okay, 
So we're going to use this equation right now and substitute these numbers into the formula. And so 15 being our displacement, it's equal to half, zero is our initial speed, and our time is 5.5 seconds. Now there's many different ways of mathematically solving this. I'm going to show you what I think is the easiest way. Half times 5.5 is 2.75. And then we take our 15 and divide by 2.75 and we end up with this answer here. And there's our final velocity. In significant digits, it would be 5.5 meters per second. So after traveling 15 meters in five and a half seconds, the speed just happens to be also 5.5 meters per second. That's their final speed. Assuming constant acceleration, that's very important. Assuming that they were always constantly accelerating. Is that even possible? Well, for a rollerblader, probably not. But that's the assumption we have to make. Of course, every problem needs a final statement, a conclusion. Therefore, the final speed of the person is 5.5 meters per second. Two significant digits because of the 5,500 milliseconds, which has two significant digits, and the 15 meters. All right. At the very beginning of this video, you saw a stopwatch. So now you're going to need a stopwatch. If you don't have a stopwatch, you could always use the stopwatch feature on your personal electronic device. So here's the question, here's the problem, a real world problem. Determine the acceleration of a toy car seen in the video as it slows down and comes to a stop. So in a moment, I'm going to show you this toy car that will be moving forward. It's a video I've made myself. And it's going to come to a stop. So again, we have to assume constant acceleration in order to be able to use those formulas and that's a good assumption in this situation. Our final speed is going to be zero, that's one variable because the car is going to come to a stop. And so from the video we will determine two things, the displacement of the car and the time it takes to come to a stop. It's time for the video. So here's the car and it's going to stop somewhere out here. The moment that this car passes this zero point, imagine there's an, a line here, an imaginary line. You're going to start your stopwatch. So I'm only going to play this video once. You have to be really quick here. So have your stopwatch ready. Here we go. Remember, you're going to start your watch the moment it passes the zero. And you're going to stop the watch when the car comes to a complete stop. So here we go, are you ready? Car is gonna stop momentarily. And there, hopefully you stopped your stopwatch and hopefully you came up with a time. So remember our goal is to get two things from this video, displacement, and time. So the displacement. It looks like the car stopped around that grain of the wood and if we just follow that grain of the wood back to the meter stick, the displacement is around 0.52 meters. I don't think I could, I could be any more precise than that decimal uh, just because the car is a little bit too far away from the meter stick. The time. The time I got was 13.45 seconds. Hopefully you got an answer similar to that. Now the one thing you will have noticed is that the video was captured using the slow motion feature on the personal electronic device. Most slow motion features currently on the market slow down time by a factor of eight. So what does that actually mean? If on the stopwatch, I got 13.45 seconds, in real life, in real life, 
the time, if you were watching the event, would have lasted 1.68 seconds. And that makes sense. If you roll a car, it doesn't roll for that long. How did we get 1.68? We took our time of 13.45 and divided by 8. So whenever you record a video using the slow motion feature, for most personal electronic devices, you have to divide the time by a factor of 8. So now we have our three variables. We have our final speed, we have our displacement, and we have our time. And our goal was to always get the acceleration. So once again, there's our formulas, and we're hunting for the equation. So let's see. Is it this equation here? Well, it's got acceleration. It's got time, it's got displacement, but it has V1 in it. It has initial speed. No, it's not that one. Let's look at this one here. Does it have displacement? Yep. Does it have the variable V2? Yep. Does it have the time? Yes. And does it have acceleration? Yes. That's it. The other formulas don't work. So this is the formula we're going to use to solve for the acceleration. So there's our formula, delta D equals V2, delta T minus half A delta T squared. And we substitute 0.52. This is zero because the final speed is zero. And this is our 1.68. We multiply this through 1.68 times 1.68 times half equals that number. Zero subtract that number is simply that number. And now we divide to solve for our acceleration. We don't subtract, that's a common student error. Instead we divide. And our acceleration is negative 0.37 meters per second per second. What does that mean? Remember, it's important to always try to understand what acceleration means. So it means every one second, the car slows down by 0 0.37 meters per second. And so our final concluding statement, the acceleration of the car, assuming it is constant, while slowing down is negative 0 0.37 meters per second squared. Hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Have a great day. Bye-bye.